Hi, good morning and welcome to the ZP vlog. We do this vlog every um, Sunday at 8am London time and we really just do it to sort of wrap up the news from ZP for this week. And so when I say wrap up the news, you know, we put out technical, let's say, notes. We do put out sort of uh, material about what we're up to. So I'm just going to kind of summarise it. Oh, I'll say summarise it. Yes, for this week, all the material that we've um, put out for this week. So I think the... Um, What's interesting is we've actually had quite a busy week this week. Um, several of us have been out at conferences. The team has been super busy, um, as per normal, sort of developing new sensors. Uh, we've got some exciting updates on our um, food sense technology. But if I was to go f um, very quickly, we did have a very nice um, webinar um, recently with um, Technando. So Technando is um, our representative and our distributor in um, India um, very cool company very well educated and very entrepreneurial so we're delighted to work with them um, and we had a nice webinar but we're going to redo this webinar now I'm um, in conjunction with um, with Technando and so if you're kind of interested in biosensors um, and maybe the sort of role of um, data science in biosensors which can certainly not be denied anymore or not even denied I mean you know it's just a fact these days and we're gonna have this webinar on the 11th of October which will be 11:30 um, a.m. I'm sorry yeah 11:30 a.m. UK time but realistically by the time it translates into um, India this will be about 5 p.m. Um, Indian time so there will be a webinar on the 11th of October around data science um, in conjunction with our um, excellent partners in India and um, Technando Something else that's kind of, um, I really feel like there's a movement in the world at the moment to really kind of try and get on top of people or trying to really help people with chronic um, kidney disease. So, so they kind of call it CKD, but we see so many um, inquiries and programs around um, the monitoring or the monitoring and control of, um, unfortunately, patients who maybe are on dialysis or have chronic disease or chronic kidney disease. And at, Z, at ZP, we do definitely have a whole stack of um, technologies um, around kidney disease. Um, we have our potassium sensor, our sodium sensors, our urea sensors, our pH sensors. Um, I even put in our uric acid sensor, but I know that at least the top, the first four, uh, potassium, sodium, urea, pH, are very um, indicative of... Um, really the sort of job that the kidneys have done. I mean, people are trying to achieve um, a term, they're kind of, kind of homeostasis. You know, the body wants to kind of keep itself in a good state. And so all these things, you know, of potassium, sodium, urea, pH, you know, the pH has to be in a certain place. The um, potassium and sodium need to be, you know, well balanced. If you're building up with urea, then it's sort of an indicator that you're building up with waste products. Um, and so these things are important. ZP does actually have these sensors. And we're doing a webinar on Tuesday because really it's actually not so hard for ZP to incorporate these sensors now into our technology stack, especially our Sense It All technology stack. So we'll do a webinar on Sense It All on Tuesday. But if you're really interested in understanding, you know, things like how to make a kidney panel and how to make it actually actually do it and let's say get it to market, then maybe that um, webinar will be useful to you. I'll go a bit quicker because I'm just, um, but related to this as well, it's just really a sort of, how do I describe this as a sort of a different term, same problem that unfortunately, if the kidneys are not doing their disease, um, then you can get these kind of uremic toxins. I need to look up this term uremic. Um, it sort of has, obviously has that sort of urine, urea um, origin to it. I suspect there's a Latin root to this and I haven't looked it up. That said, um, Uremic toxins, if you're a chemist, then you love, um, you don't love, but the terms um, paracresyl sulfate and endoxyl sulfate, these are kind of organic molecules, um, which are two of the uremic toxins. These, these uremic toxins, whereas you could argue that urea is the kind of biomarker, people have these other toxins associated with them as well. And the question is, can we detect these at ZP? And a quick answer is, we can. Doing it in the, we then have to find out the context of detecting them. Um, so there is that sort of next question. It's something I always say to people, look, they come to us, ZP, can you detect this? Yes, I can. Um, but it's the context. What do you want to detect it in? Is it the urine? 
Is it plasma? Is it blood? Is it serum? Is it tear film? Um, <clears throat> these are important questions. Is it on the breath even, for example? But we can detect these uremic um, toxins. They're organic molecules at ZP. We quite like um, molecules that when we say organic, there's also this extra term, which is, are they aromatic? Aromatic just means they have these lots of benzene rings. And also we like heteroatoms, nitrogen, phosphorus, um, sulfur. These would be the kind of heteroatoms. Nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen. Yes. Um, and something else now that we've, we've started doing this. Um, what is the greatest thing that we're most proud of at ZP? Um, it's actually, I think one of them is actually Julie. Now, Julie is this amazing data management system. I used to call it database, but it's such a underplay of what it really is. A database essentially, you know, obviously stores data, but Julie is a data management system. Um, and what it means is, you know, that we can um, upload or we can upload, we can store our data, we can analyze our data, we can share our data, and actually later on we can even download our data and produce reports upon our data. So this is a data management system. Um, that said, we do have a very low cost um, entry level system, we call it um, freemium. And then I just we just did a webinar this week on the 29th of August, um, saying freemium versus premium. What I want to say on this is that every Tuesday at 8 a.m. London time, we are doing these webinars now on Julie, just trying to answer questions that came in during the week. So if you're able to attend, fantastic, but just know that and the reason we're doing this is it's part of our sort of commitment to our to our users, really, that we're doing what we're saying is if you're a Julie user, just know that there's a regular webinar because it will just top you up on if you have a question, we'll get it covered in that webinar. If you're thinking about using Julie, you can sort of follow the webinar series and you know get a good sense of this technology before you um, maybe adopt it. So in summary, we do a webinar every Tuesday at 8 a.m. London time all around Julie. This week we talked about freemium versus premium, you know, and what the differences are. Um, and I know I said it at the very beginning, but this is really something that we're really proud of. It's one, I think it's a world-class data management system specifically tuned, tuned for electrochemical data. Um, now, I just said that, you know, we're obviously showing a big commitment to our products and actually in the same vein, we're doing a Q&A session every Wednesday at 8 a.m. London time um, on our product Food Sense. So questions come in during the week um, and we've laid out all of the webinars for Food Sense for the month of September. So there's one on the 16th, 13th, 20th and 27th of September. And it's basically so we are able to say to people, yes, we support these products, um, you know, and there's, there, there's a whole, let's say, library of uh, support material. And more importantly as well, we're always, you know, we're able to say, like, you've got a question, we'll probably get it. There'll always be a webinar once a week to kind of answer those kind of um, questions as well. And I realized that um, in the same vein as that, we actually did a webinar specifically for food sense this week um you know we obviously sent out invitations people attended and we did do actually a live streaming webinar um on food sense this week so thank you for the zp team for um supporting that um webinar so in those webinars we essentially get people to kind of i want to say you know we introduce the technology we talk about the science we actually do a couple of demos we do often do one that's easy you know, and I don't, you know, Tabasco sauce is very easy, it's very homogenous, it's not very viscous, it's got no chunks in it. And then we do something that's a bit more difficult. So this week they did, um, I think they did a naga sauce in the morning one and a chili powder in the afternoon. So good job um, to the ZP engineers um, for doing that. Something else I haven't mentioned this week, but something I have been mentioning quite a lot recently is we have our Scandinavia Census Summit, our S3 or S cubed um, conference, um, not this week, but next week. Um, and this is really digitization for a sustainable future. And we're delighted that we're offering university groups to come to our, um, essentially to our conference. And um, we're offering sort of a, a package um, for universities to um, attend. Um, something else that we did as well, uh, you know, I, I did mention Sense It All earlier on. Sense It All is this kind of platform that says, what is it you want to measure? Sometimes it's just an electrochemical assay and sometimes it's an electrochemical sensor. I can talk about the difference between assays and sensors. You know, sensors, you kind of, you build the specificity 
into the material. So you may put an enzyme in there. Whereas an assay, you may get the specificity from the method file and the way of extracting the information from the signal. Um, so people come to us and say, look, we want to measure the conductivity and this solution that we have is very organic solvent in nature. Organic solvents basically love to um, dissolve um, polymers and stuff like that. So, you, so your normal sort of lab equipment may not actually always be able to withstand organic solvents. And so we did have a go at measuring an aggressive um, organic solvent. Um, we could see the person's problem because it essentially melted the end of our conductivity probe, which was made of a polymer. But we were actually looking to translate it onto a sense it all. Again, sense it all is our kind of way of saying, all right, you've got a problem. You need to make it into a, into a um, product or usable technology very quickly. And sense it all is that platform. We can translate um, ideas and problems onto the platform really quickly. Um, and so we were talking to them about um, translating their need for conductivity measurements onto the sense it all platform. And I did put some notes out there, there as well about how I can see their current problem is um, normal lab conductivity probes just can't handle um, their materials. Something else as well, I was at a um, conference this week. Um, it was all about sodium ion batteries. So obviously everyone knows about lithium ion batteries, um, but there is also a sort of, um, it's not, I wouldn't say a movement. I mean, it's really going to happen. But when I say it's going to happen to you, though, I think, um, the sodium ion battery capacity, I believe, in the globe at the moment is something like 260 gigawatts. So it's gone beyond this kind of, you know, um, lab. It's definitely a sort of, you know, industrializing. All that said, I was at this conference this week about sodium ion. We realized that um, in the sodium ion space, they do like to use um, Prussian white. And so we were talking about the use of our um, technology stack in order to measure or monitor processes, um, for example, in the production of um, Prussian white. So that is something that we um, talked about this week. Um, something else as well, we do get a lot of inquiries about EIS and biosensors, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and biosensors. We did put together a bit of a landing page that said, look, this is the potential stat, this is the cable, and this is the connector. I think a big problem in the sort of um, equipment market for um, as say potential stats and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy instruments is there's too much um well there's a lot of choice which sounds great but nobody's helping you make that choice so at zp we do always have a perspective of the either the user or the new user to the market and so we try to simplify look this is the potential stat this is the cable this is the connector and we also do recommend you know electrodes but when we're recommending electrodes we always say to people look if you can use carbon use carbon people Think, for example, if they're trying to make an immunosensor, it has to be gold. It doesn't have to be gold. You can use carbon. You just have to change the linking chemistry. And it's really important because carbon and platinum, sorry, gold and platinum are not cheap and they're not getting cheaper. Um, there's always people who will compete, who want to compete on those materials, but carbon is much more ubiquitous. I mean, just this week, I was seeing people making carbon from... Um, from sawdust people were making carbon from the husks of coconuts you know we can get carbon can essentially be gathered from biomass or bio waste if i can put it that way but gold and platinum these are um rarer materials i mean it's a silly comment but platinum is made when a when a star goes supernova um one of the elements that's made in that supernova um event is platinum i mean can you <laughs> it's such a rare not a rare event because actually there's sort of trillions of stars in the in the universe but that's where it comes from so you can see how it could be so hard to actually get platinum because of actually you know even its deep origin is you know it's a sort of an event that happens you know in a in the death of a dying star it's kind of ridiculous um so be careful about building bio biosensors or bioassays upon platinum and gold always choose carbon if you can get away with it if you don't think you can do it talk to zp because we could probably tell you how to do it and then I suppose I should really finish off with um, last comment of the week. Every Thursday at 8am London time, we do like to do our webinar for our ZP Developer Zone members. Um, it'll be on the 7th of September, 2023, 8am London time. Uh, questions are already coming in and we will be busy um, 
preparing answers and you can watch that live or you can watch the recording as well. So I think I should sort of wrap up this week and just sort of summarize those. At ZP, we do have our S-Cubed conference next week. Um, that's a really big event, at least for us at ZP, but it's about digitization for sustainable future. We do have some webinars this week on Sense It All. Sense It All reduces the timeline to make a electrochemical sensing minimal viable product down from probably nine months to a year to two years down to something more like three months. Um, we do have our webinar with Technando that will be in October and that will be on the um, subject of data science and biosensors. So, and of course, we've also talked a lot this week about actually um, CKD, chronic um, kidney disease. Unfortunately, it's a massive global um, issue. I want to say sort of pandemic really, um, but at ZP, we do actually have a lot of technology that can at least monitor this. And if you can monitor it, then you can start to control it. So I'll stop it there. Say thank you very much for following along. And if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to reach out to ZP. Okay, thanks very much.